None of you can contain your amazement. After all, you were in a vampire's house. Yeah, get out of there, kids! Get the fuck out of there! <laughs> Let's play Vani Lake. Hello and welcome to Hula New Play's short indie horror game. Today I'm going to play... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit. Where's the store page? Um, a game by LCB Game Studios. I previously played um, another game by them. I played Mothman 1966. So, okay. So, LCB uh, Game Studio. Here we go. They do pulp fiction horror games. Um, usually kind of like adventure-ish, but not in the old school like Monkey Island style. It is... Um, I don't know it's really unique in a way because it has a very old school comic style very pixel art um, but then they also have like funny little um games basically like mini games you know within the game at least with mothman and it's it's so fun because it's very well written it is funny it is very interesting and it goes off the rails which is one of my favorite things when it comes to um horror games just to have something you know, that kind of surprises me where I'm like, I think I know where this is headed. And then when I'm in there, you know, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this. Vani Lake is, um, it kind of has a certain feel of Stand By Me meets, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it. Like, I kind of know it, but I don't want to spoil it. So let's just start this, have a lot of fun with it, hopefully. Um, I don't know if this is just one episode or it might be two or three because Mothman 1966 that was a little bit of a longer game I think it was two or three hours so it's not too long you know but um, yeah so we might not get through this episode but that's fine they can see very retro you know the pixel art is gorgeous <laughs> and a cool soundtrack. That's Jimmy. Summer 1954. Press enter to continue. Will do. Truth or dare? The question takes you by surprise. I don't know why you ask him. He always makes the same choice. Oh. Well, I think I would be kind of the truth kind of gal. Uh, expecting good faith truth questions, you know, somewhat embarrassing, but not something where it's like, just, you know, completely, you know, are you kidding me? Because there, oh man, uh, but oh, let's, let's go with him. Let's say he's maybe the kind of, he, okay, so in my head, he's like the character that's more closed off, you know, doesn't want to talk about himself. So he's usually doing the dare because he's kind of like the, you know, the sporty kid dare what did i tell you huh as hard as it is to admit doug is right dare always was the easy option for you christine bites her lip let's see i know you're going to try doug's new game huh wouldn't you rather make me eat a beetle <laughs> or do a headstand on an ant nest yeah yeah you too love you'll need me later to learn new tricks Christine taps you on the shoulder. You look at her, and she smiles at you. You can't think of anything to say. You feel like every step you don't open your mouth is another missed opportunity. Oh, he has a crush. And you know that when you go to sleep and run the conversation in your head, a thousand things you could have said to her will come to you. You think you hear someone whistling. Are you imagining things now? You're still bothered about yesterday. Why didn't you wait for Doug and Christine to arrive? What did you want to prove? You try to think of something else. Like your mom says, what's done is done. You clear your throat. Dear listeners, yeah, fuck yeah! We formally kick off a new summer in Varney Lake. Doug claps his hands and Christine Wolf whistles. Christine is a year and ten months older. They always, they're very often older, aren't they, in those uh, kid stories? Don't know where that comes from. Maybe they're mysterious, I don't know, like older girls. I don't know, why is she hanging out with these young kids? <laughs> but when you do the radio host voice, you don't feel the age gap as much. She's Doug's cousin. Ah, and this is the fourth summer you spent together. Okay, so yeah, I get it. But still, man, it must be shit for her to like spend the time with like kids. 
<laughs> she lives with just her mom. Her dad died in the Korean War. Doug is a few months younger than you. He's still 12, but turns 13 in a few weeks. He never knew his father, and his mother is Christine's aunt. Aunt, 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 aunt. Christine, Doug, and you are all only children. Ah, oh, yeah. And what had started as a joke ended up formalizing into the idea of a club. So make yourselves comfortable. You pause and point to Doug and Christine. The all-new adventures of the only child club are about to begin. The club had been Doug's idea. But it was Christine who suggested trying to raise the money to buy the old Varney Lake Drive-In Theater. They say you can see strange lights at night. Christine makes a noise with her mouth. Who say? Doug doesn't answer. I wouldn't be the headlights of ghost cars, wouldn't it? You laugh. Doug takes a deep breath and shakes his head from side to side. People died in that fire. Real people. Can't you see his face, Jimmy? He's fucking with you. Doug laughs and makes some faces at you. You let out a laugh and threaten to punch him in the stomach. But you don't, right? You get to the old sycamore tree. And try to erase the memory of that time when you chickened out of kissing Christine. Jimmy, the dare. It had all started two summers ago. Doug had shown you a book he was obsessed with. He wouldn't tell you where he'd found it. The book provided lots of valuable information on games played with cards, matchsticks, dice. That tin can we keep the money in isn't gonna be big enough, right? Doug opens his backpack, takes out a deck of cards and hands it to you. In the last few years, you three had raised enough money to get your hopes up. Remember what we promised. Christine tucks her hair behind her ear. Before the younger member of the club turns 18, or the youngest member, Doug beats his chest, and that would be me, we'll buy the drive-in. The solitaire game I invented is going to make us so much money. There was also a card game in Mothman 1966 and I lost it. And I also, I won't try it a lot. I will try it once, you know, and that's that. Just to show you how it plays. But yeah, we're not here to play cards, you know. It's called Solitaire 10. You'll see why. It might even be the same game, but I forgot the rules, so. The idea is to start from the card you turn over and try to add cards to get 10. 10? But isn't the jack worth 11? Yes, the jack 11, the queen 12, and the king 13. I will not remember that. Sorry, it's just how it is. So, Doug pauses before revealing the key to his creation. Depending on the color of the card you turn over, cards you choose from the board will either add or subtract to the total. Try as you might, you find it hard to follow Doug's instructions. So, uh, is, is red minus and black plus? Doug seems to realize this and signals you to wait. If the first card is red, red cards will add to the total and black cards will subtract. And if it's black, black cards will be the ones that add and red cards the ones that subtract. Okay, so uh, red ones will add in this occasion, in this instance. And what happens if you can't reach 10? You turn over a new card and continue with that one. Christine remains silent. She seems to be about to say something, but in the end she doesn't. And get this. Doug can hide his excitement. If you reach 10 using all of the 10 cards available, you shout Super 10 and win outright. Doug taps you on the shoulder. You make a Super 10 and I give you a dare. Ugh. Well, I'll just get started. I won't. Do I have to do this? If you run out of cards to turn over and come back 10, we count the cards in the pot and that's your final score. Okay. Select a card. Uh... Oh, move cursor to the right. Um, no, wait. Move cursor to... No, that's add card to total. And turn. Turn over... Oh, okay. Um, select a card. Uh, boop, 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 boop. That's 10, right? That was 10. I did 10, right? <laughs> um, select a card, actually. Um, because we can use the 10, right? Just don't even have to... Oh no, we can't. Undo. 
and do last move. Uh, uh, so, so king is, was that 13? So that would be 18. Oh, we, we don't have. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I know, I know, I know. So add card to total and then select the card. Uh, add card to total. So that's 10. And that's end turn. Add sum to the pod, right? Okay. How how long do I have to do this, by the way? <laughs> like, uh, exit. Stop playing. You can't focus on the game. Is it any good? I kind of like it, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm, again, I'm not here to play cards. But I really, I, li I like the game. Like, if I have more time, like, if you don't play it in front of, like, an audience that you want to entertain. And you're also really shit at card games, you know. Then that's a really cool game. Okay. And I think it's different from the other one. Cousin. Now what? Christine seems to enjoy the situation. There's an easy way to make a super 10. No, how? Christine starts to explain something, but you stop paying attention. What's up? You hear a whistling sound that makes your gut clench. You see Brandon in the distance, and your heart starts to race. Oh, it's the bullies! Look at them with their bully shirts. Yeah, <laughs> that was lots of bully, all right. They're looking for you. Guys, I fucked up. Doug and Christine suddenly shut up. What do you mean you fucked up? Jimmy? You point to a spot on the horizon and your voice cracks. It's just the band and... You pause and try to sound more confident. Yesterday we played dice and I fleeced him. Christine taps you on the shoulder, and Duck throws his head in his hands. Fucking hell. They're going to kill us. Shh, come on. Come over here. And get down. Christine is almost two years older than you. But there are times when you feel even younger next to her. You walk non-stop for more than half an hour. If Brandon doesn't kill us, the heat will. You look at Doug. The cream he uses is invisible. But it's got a strong smell. You've gotten used to it, but it still hits your nostrils from time to time. Is it true what his mother says? Doug is the only boy you know who's allergic to the sun. Oh, that's shit. I know, yeah. That must be so, so bad. I can't believe you didn't wait for us yesterday. Try to explain. Bran wanted a rematch. I didn't think he'd figure out Doug's trick. You thought... Y you thought... That's your problem. You think too much. You keep quiet and look straight ahead. You can't bring yourself to hold Christine's gaze. Sorry to interrupt you, but we've reached the river. Ooh. Little River's on one of the main tributaries of Vani Lake. Is it safe? Do I have to sneeze? I think it's gone. Okay. You take a deep breath and cross the old bridge at full speed. I like the sound, it's cool. The distance makes you feel better. Because even though you like her, Christine intimidates you. Come on, Doug. Don't be a pussy. Hey! Language. Doug looks at Christine and Christine points to the bridge. Your turn. Doug starts to cross. The board moves and he lets out a scream. Christine laughs. It's beautiful, but it makes you feel hollow. And that hollowness reminds you that Christine's been dating a boy from her hometown for several years. Well... Look, at this age, two years approximately, that's a big, that's a, a big difference, you know. Especially not to be all like gender differences, but occasionally, you know, especially at this time, I think it was kind of for girls and boys. Just due to the social environment, you know, not because of inherently differences in, in, in the kids' brains, but rather in how they are being raised. So... And that when the summer is over, she'll be back with him. Yeah, well, as she should be. Jimmy, you know, deal with it. I know, I know, it's hard. I had so many un... How is it? Unrequited crushes? Like, heaps, mountains, you know. Just, you can fill the ocean with it. So I know how to deal with it. 
Over there, see? Yes. What is it? No freaking idea. Shall we go see? Christine nods and duck shrugs. You've never been to this part of Vani Lake before. How far have we walked already? Not far enough yet. Brenton is... Christine seems to be looking for the right word. Bitter. Son of a bitch, you think. You walk faster to try to keep some thoughts out of your head. Christine follows close behind you and Doug. Wow. A new headquarters for the club? Gets my vote. Is it abandoned? Let's go and see. You all run to the entrance of the mill with a surprising energy. Although the door is open, the stench of confinement is intense. There's a guy in there. Ooh, The sun. For a few seconds, no one says anything. Duck seems to remember something and starts going through his backpack. You know, there's this thing when you were a child and you were hanging out with your kids, especially like on vaca on holidays, you know, uh, when school was out on summers, etc., where you where it really felt like you had places where no adults were. At least in my childhood, you know, there were truly places where I would go where I wouldn't have any adults around. And then it was always jarring when you suddenly saw adults, you know, or met someone. Because it felt like an intruder, you know, into your own little world and your own little space. So I guess that's, you know, what they're going for here. My mom bought this allergy cream for me. The sun. Something about the man's desperation moves you. You grab Duck's hand and shake your head. You think of your grandfather. The day he died, you had read him a letter from your grandmother. When you finished and you thought he had fallen asleep, you got up carefully and walked to the door. But he was not asleep. Whispering, he asked you to close all the curtains. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. Half an hour later, you found him dead in his bed. And you could swear he was smiling. He doesn't need any cream, Doug. He just wants a little darkness. Ooh. Sun is coming in through two different windows. Is he really that old? Because he kind of looks hot. <laughs> As vampires are supposed to look like. One high up, the other full of broken glass. Cover the windows. You think about asking Doug and Christine to stand in front of the lowest window. Because, okay, so, before you're like, well, that's obviously a vampire, why do you help him? You will kill the kids. I, I, I usually try to do two things when I play these games, just in case you don't know me yet. Hi, I'm Hula Nu. Um... I play from the perspective of the character, so I try to make choices that make sense. But at the same time, I try to also stay true to how I would react. And in this case, how I would react as a kid. So you see an adult, they're like, they don't want to see the sun, so you cover up the windows. Because, you know, they don't immediately think that this is a vampire or a serial murderer. So obviously they will help him. Okay. You think about asking Doug and Christine to stand in front of the lowest window. But it's full of glass and looks dangerous. As for the higher window, there's no way to cover it without using some kind of tool. So we have to search through the rubble. Okay. Uh, grab blanket. You lift the blanket and shake it a little. Um, move old plow. Lean it against... I don't know. Lean it against the window with a broken... You leave the blanket on the floor. You ask Doug and Christine for help and you lift the old plow. Watch out for the glass. You move closer to the window and gently rest it to block the light coming in from outside. Excellent. Oh. Cover the... What do you think about... Okay. 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 Search through the rubble. Um... Grab long reed? In a corner of the mill you find some long reeds. You grab one. Grab blanket. You lift the blanket and shake it a little. Cover the windows. Ah, use reed and blanket with high window. Okay, something occurs to you. It's the same technique your mom uses to remove cobwebs from high ceilings. Only she uses a broom and an old rag. You put the blanket over the reed and lean the reed against the wall. You try to block the light coming through the window without success. You need another reed to stretch the blanket and cover more surface area. Search through the rubble. Grab another long reed. You grab another reed. <laughs> cover the windows. Use second reed. <laughs> you leave the second reed against the wall and tuck another blanket. Moving the two reeds carefully, you stretch the blanket to block all the light coming through the high window. 
Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it kind of looks old, but not like old, old, you know. I think from a from a kid's perspective, it probably looks very old. Oh, Doug. <laughs> Doug's canteen bounces off one of the walls and lands on the rubble with a thud. So he throws it. Doug just wanted to help, dude. You're not even sure you saw the old man lashing out. And you wonder if your brain isn't filling in the blanks. Ugh. You help the old man up. Who is he? And why is he dressed like that? Dapper? <laughs> you turn your head towards the door. The old man raises his hand, his gaze fixed upon the animal. No! 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 Don't! None of you move a muscle. Oh, no. You think of Brandon laughing about how he and his brothers used to kill rabbits. You have to point the flashlight at them. They freeze like idiots. You approach slowly and a good hit does the rest. But what followed was no hit at all. Oh, oh, yeah, that's me. Uh, uh. And then a hula. Like, oh. <laughs> that's unfortunate. The body of the deer lays limp at the feet of the vampire. Oh, now they got it. They're like, oh. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah, that makes sense with the light and everything and the clothes. Obviously, that was our mistake, obviously. I mean, I'm not... Well, 1954, did kids know the concept of Dracula as much like kids nowadays? Of course, you know. I think not a single generation in the last 30 years has grown up without any crucial piece of media involving vampires you know from after dark to uh lost boys to twilight to dracula you know bram stoker's dracula with keanu reeves and Winona Ryder. um and uh, I'm, funnily enough I'm, I'm naming the two worst <laughs> performances of the movie <laughs> You know, and then you have, like, the uh, Vampire Diaries, which I never watch, but, you know, that's, like, a lot of people watch that. So, um, but 1954, like, what did you have? You probably had, like, a black and white movie and the book. But if you were a kid, like, Christine probably read it, maybe Doc, you know, I'm not sure about Jimmy. Well, maybe he is a reader, who knows? But I don't know. Like, if you're 12, did you really? And in America, you know? I mean, I read kind of weird stuff when I was a kid, but that was also because my parents were kind of weird. So that fit, you know, but I don't know. So maybe they don't even know the concept, but they apparently do. Anyways. <laughs> it's noon, and the same sun you blocked from the old mill shines with all its intensity over Vani Lake. First scene over. That's super cool. Yeah, so it has always a little bit of a cinematic feel. Wait, do we know Lou? Autumn 1981. Oh, next chapter. Yeah, so in Mothman as well, we, we um, played from different perspectives. But in Mothman 1966, we played in the same timeline. And here it seems like we will have different timelines and characters. So interesting. And I'm, I can't remember if Lou played a part because we had a couple of characters that felt like they had more backstory to them. I can only imagine the fear you must felt. Jimmy remained silent, staring at some point behind your head. After his detailed account about that first encounter with the vampire, he seemed somewhat changed, but you can't really say how. You look towards the door. Will she come as she promised? Christine. Jimmy sighs and looks down. What's he thinking about? He doesn't know about it, but you'd got your hands on the reports about his involvement in the Vietnam War through an acquaintance. Would you include any of that in your new book? I think we met Lou in Mothman because we had a writer there who was like kind of getting it off with, uh, well, not getting it off, but kind of somewhat having chemistry with one of the other characters. So this is a cool red thread. I love this. Okay, ask again if they were afraid. Again. Why? But I don't know. Change the subject? I would change the subject, I think. Because if I already asked and I feel like it's really painful for them, I don't... I wouldn't really drill down on that. Do you like the rain? 
look out of the window and think of the people running around looking for shelter. I was always afraid of the rain. That's what? Why, Lou? What the? Some images come to your mind. Images of cars floating, people walking through water almost waist high. But it wasn't your childhood that you had come to talk about today. Oh, so flood. Flooding. Yeah, I get that. Okay, now I get it. Another coffee? Jimmy shakes his head and you don't insist. Oh, someone's watching. Yeah, I see you. Obviously, it's very obvious. You think of your editor, of the words he said to you the last time you met. Your career wouldn't survive another failure. Jimmy settles back in his chair. You want to know what I'm afraid of, Lou? Did you ever forget a name? The director of a movie? Or the author of a book? When something like that happens to you, the mind becomes obsessed. It goes into a loop, trying to remember that name even when you don't care anymore. Oh yeah, I get that. It's, I, like, my, my brain is really, it's jumbled, like, I have two languages in my head, which is not a lot, you know, there's a lot more people who have a lot more languages in their head, and then, like, a lot of stuff, um, and I, I get, especially with names, very just jumbled. I think in a, um, I think in a, in a, in a recent Let's Play, I actually said Claire Blanchett instead of Kate Blanchett. And then when I was editing, I was like, what the fuck was going on there? So, yeah, Jimmy, I can relate. The answer can appear at any moment. While you're watching TV, while you're washing the dishes. It's stubbornness. That freedom of your mind to work behind the scenes. As if it were an independent entity. What's the limit, Lou? Does it have an end? You remain silent, feeling how the distance between you and Jimmy grows with each passing second. For you, these questions were never rhetorical. And you know that there are not many people prepared to listen to the answers. There it is. After talking on the phone, you had your doubts. But in the end, she came. You had chosen this table so that Jimmy was sitting with his back to the door. You needed the surprise effect. Oh, that's shitty. Jimmy? Why does she look like she's 20 and he looks like he's 57? Christine? Time seems to stand still and neither of them moves. How long has it been? 27? 27 years? Wow. Why does he look so shitty? Pro oh, well, war trauma, I guess. I mean, he doesn't look that bad, you know, just a little bit rugged. Rugged? Rugged. Do you notice the way Jimmy seems to stumble over his words? You know that love is nothing more than an adaptive trick to perpetuate the species. Jesus, Lou. Uh, I... But as with any other magic trick, knowing there's a trick is not enough to escape its effects. Come. Let's sit at the table. Jimmy, I can't believe it. Jimmy smiles and you look away. There's something about the gesture that makes you uncomfortable. As if the muscles in his face have forgotten what a smile looks like. I'm a little late, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. We've just started. <laughs> I can't, he's so determined. We've just started. <laughs> you tell Christine what you were talking about with Jimmy. That day in the summer of 1954, when you met the vampire. Did you tell him about Doug, my cousin? No, he died! Not poor Doug! Jimmy nods and starts drumming his fingers on the table. Or maybe he turned into a vampire. Because he already had this, you know, um, illness. So that's kind of what, like, be poetic, you know. Kind of, you know. Why is he drumming his fingers on the table? Although you assume it's a nervous gesture, Jimmy's fingers seem to be asking something of Christine. That summer was... I'm sorry. I thought I was ready. God, she's gorgeous, isn't she? You lean forward and take a deep breath. You know you can't miss this opportunity. You tell them what you can about your new book. At first, you find it hard to articulate some ideas. You're not selling a project to a publisher. Gradually, you find your tone, and you are aware of the effect of your words have on both Jimmy and Christine. You even talk about memory as a way of purging the present at a point when you are feeling particularly poetical. But you know that memory can be that, and much more. You don't feel comfortable. Why are you doing all this? Is what your editor thinks really so important? Your readers? Anyway, you had managed to spur a change. And Christine seems determined to talk. 
You have to understand that we were kids. Kids. You find it interesting that Christine uses the same arguments as Jimmy. That the summer was just beginning... Wow, I miss that feeling. The days seem to go on forever. Oh, yeah. It's not the same as an adult, is it? To, like, have go on vacation? Because you cannot... There's a way you can turn off your... All, at least in my head, when I was on summer vacation... First of all, in Germany, we had, like, six weeks, I think. Four or six weeks. And it felt like years. You know? And then you had the ability... I see the stranger, by the way. Don't worry. To kind of turn off everything else. So school really doesn't, didn't exist until, like, a week before that, you know? Um, and now it's like you go on vacation and of course I mean I don't think a lot about like I think about stuff that annoys me at work but I don't really think about tasks you know I'm not like figuring out stuff or being creative about some headlines or texts you know because just no you know but it's it's still with you you know you you could always have in your head like you count down the days and then when it's the middle of the vacation, you're like, oh man, 50% over, now it's just downhill from here. So, yeah, there's a difference as a kid to have, like, vacation holidays than as an adult. It's really, yeah, yeah, it's sad. And we could do anything. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's go, Christine. We do her, and then we'll stop. I love this though. It's really cool. What do you think the odds are? You like this feeling. Almost as if you were floating and everything weighed a little less. You needed this. And you know your mom did too. Hmm. You'd say the same odds as shuffling a deck of cards and getting an order that's already been dealt. In the history of all mankind. <laughs> Wait a minute. How? I read somewhere that if you shuffle a deck of 52 cards well, if you shuffle it very well, four or five times, like this, even though you're not looking at him, you can imagine Duck shuffling an invisible deck of cards. The odds of getting a card order someone already got are infinitely small. There's a slight breeze. You try to imagine what could be the possible configuration for you to see it. How small? Uh, it was like one in, I don't know, huge number. I think it had like 67 zeros. That's how I always remember facts, by the way. Like, I can give you the gist of it and then don't ask me about details. That's my entire, my entire brain works in more storytelling. Like, I can tell you stuff, you know, like the broad thing, like the summary of it, you know, the what's interesting about it. And then as soon as you're like, do you have a number, you know? you like what exactly and that's just no I'm sorry that's where all this ends you can google it <laughs> wow does a number that big even have a name you can't help but smile Jimmy is nothing like your boyfriend your boyfriend is taller bigger more self-confident I think we're going to see it neither one of them says anything but you know they're waiting for you to go on Doug your little cousin who has always idolized and feared you in equal measure. He's so cute, isn't he? Look at him. Look at him! You know who he reminds me of? Um, there was a show in the 90s called Eerie Indiana. And there was a protagonist who did not look like Doug. But he had a best friend who looked like Doug without the glasses. And yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. Jimmy. Doug's friend who's now your friend too. And you always knew he liked you. Mark my words. This summer we're going to see Mount Rushmore in the sky. What? Oh, they're looking for cool clouds? I don't know, cousin. 67 is a lot of zeros. The math is not important. It's enough that we've added it to the list. Duck pulls your journal out of the backpack and hands it to you. And you all read the summer bucket list with veneration. Get 100 US dollar. Catch an albino tarpon. That's probably a fish. Yeah, it's fishing club. See Mount Rushmore in the clouds. Okay, yeah. But that's a cool bucket list. Except that one. But why? Well, I guess fishing. What's that? Um, even though you understand the boy's doubts, you know they're looking at the problem in the wrong way. Finding shapes in the clouds speaks more about the people looking for them than the shapes themselves. That's true. 
to an extent, you know, I mean, you can make a circle or square, but of course, with some imagination, a lot of things can look differently to different people. The problem is to get the three of you to agree on what you're seeing. And when that moment comes, when all three of you agree that you're seeing the same thing, you will have reached the most precious moment of your friendship. Wow, that's kind of sad. <laughs> I get it, symbolically, but still. Martin, Felix's father, father, was the only one who had ever caught one. Such a feat had earned him his picture on the wall of the fisherman's bar. There was a time when everyone wanted to catch another albino tarpon. But time went by and people started to distrust Martin's story. And the very existence of the albino tarpon. Yeah, but... So my opinion of this is... And look, I'm not vegan or anything, so yes, I'm, I'm talking, you know, out of my ass here. But still, when there's such an seldom and unique animal why would you want to catch and kill it you know why wouldn't you just rather i don't know it's it's kind of daunting to just know it's there maybe and believe in that you know than just trying to catch it and kill it because then it's not there anymore that's that you know that's the just deleting the wonder of the world from the world all right get 100 us dollars this was one of the club's oldest goals. Year after year, you aim to raise a hundred dollars to someday be able to buy the drive-in theater. I don't know, man. That will take a lot of years. Do you know how... Well, it was the 50... Like, 1954, so probably, like... I don't know. How much did the house cost back then? Like, five hundred dollars? So I guess it works out, you know. <laughs> Last year, you had come close. And Jimmy thought all you needed was just a little more ruthlessness. Check the Varney Lake map. Oh, look at the locations you've marked on the map. Up Little River. Felix had told you that before he was born, his parents had had a daughter. A daughter who would now be like you if it weren't for a strange disease that had caused her death at a very young age. Did the vampire was there... Was the vampire there before that? Strange disease? You know, like slowly sucking the blood, like visiting regularly, like getting her blood and then she dies from a mysterious disease? You just, you know. Maybe that's why Martin talked to you more than the rest. And maybe that's why Martin has this. Because his mother or something was also bitten. And maybe that's why he had told you about the place where you should start looking for the albino tarpon. Eagle Hill. Eagle Hill is located southwest from the lake. The perfect place to feel close to the sky and find different shapes in the clouds. Okay. Eagle Hill was one of the spots the couple's older kids used to meet up at night. Until the winter, Barbara disappeared. Barbara lived year-round at Vani Lake. Eagle Hill was the last place she'd been seen alive. Okay, so that vampire has been around. And he's kind of the dick, you know. <laughs> and with Brandon, no less. Who is Brandon? After ruling out... The, the bully, yeah. After ruling out Brandon as a suspect, the police believed that Barbara had run away from Vani Lake. So she was younger, Barbara, as well. So the vampire is kind of... into kids? Hmm. Rumor around town had it that she didn't get along with her parents at all. General Market. The General Market is almost as old as the first settlement in Varney Lake. You can buy almost anything. From bread or butter to batteries or cigarettes. Well, that's four things. That's why. <laughs> but even more important, the General Market is surrounded by a concrete playground where the kids from Varney Lake hang out a lot. And that playground is the ideal place to play Doug's games and make some money, I guess. Should we mark the area the vampire told us about? Doug's right. <laughs> Why would you? The old cobblestone road stretches for miles. No one knows when it was built. Or by whom. The vampire told you to follow it to the end. Don't do it, Kiers. And to wait until it was 7 o'clock in the evening. No, that's when the sun... Well, in the summer? That's not when the sun goes down, right? Jimmy looks at Doug. I told my mom I'm sleeping at your house tonight. Man, just... Just kids, you know. I always wonder if I would have... Like, I was gullible, but also very scared as a kid. Like, very shy, you know. And scared. And so, I'm not quite sure. But I also was super trusting in specific adults. So, I don't know. I was all over the place, to be quite honest. Because I always, when I read this, you know, and it's like, well, kids, you know... And then I think, well, would I have done this? But it's very likely I would have. So I guess, because it's a, it's an adventure. They saw the vampire kill the deer, but of course he didn't hurt them. 
But that's obviously, I mean, he's leading them to their death, right? Or it's something else horrible. Okay, I'm told my mom is sleeping at your house tonight. I told mine I'm sleeping at yours. Doug and Jimmy laugh heartily. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, okay. Uh. Sneeze? No. Okay. Their mothers are at each other's throats and not talking. It's the perfect alibi. What about you? Neither of them asks you anything. You know they do it out of respect. Your mom is usually so drunk at night that you don't have to make up an excuse to go out. Aww, I'm so sorry, Christine. That's shit. There they are. You take a deep breath and get up. Summer is just beginning. And Varney Lake seems full of possibilities. Stay here and see- I wanna see, Dr. Surprise. It's nice right here. And I don't feel like walking too much. Oh, we could have been... But I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see it right now. Let's see the surprise. Doug looks for something in the backpack, and he's trembling with emotion. Aww. If we're going to stay here. Aw, another game. Oh, okay. Let me welcome you to my extravaganza of matchstick puzzles. You make a face, and Jimmy smiles. Very good presentation. Yeah, yeah. But we want the puzzle. Doug arranges the matches on the board. So hear me out. You can move just two matches to any position marked with a dotted line. And must get six squares. Move only two matches to get six squares. You look at the board. It can't be that hard, you think. No, it's hard. It is hard. Uh... It's one of those where you like, as soon as you see it, like, oh, yeah, of course. Because I, what I want to do is just move this. No. Pick up match. No. And then place the match there. But then we only have... One, two, three. Yeah, that's... Hmm. Fucking hell. The solution is correct, really, but it's it's five only. The five squares and the big square make up four, make up four of. Wait, the five squares and the big square made up of four small squares. Oh, oh. My solution is this. It's the symmetry. Yes, it could also be like this. Yeah, but it's it's pretty much the same, Doug. Or like this. Yeah, it's it's I get it. It's the same. I'm fuming. A puzzle with multiple solutions isn't elegant enough. Doug puts the board and the matches in the backpack. He looks frustrated. You lie down on the grass with a strange feeling in your chest. And close your eyes. What do you think he meant? I think it was clear. Especially after seeing how you were shaking in the, mil in the mill. Huh? Yeah, right. Wasn't it you who let out a screamer and he bit the deer? Huh? You're a little bored of listening to them fight. It's usually something you enjoy. But there are times when they seem... Childish. You think about your boyfriend. What's he doing right now? Does he miss you? Do you miss him? It's here. The end of the old road. I sharpened a twig with a razor. <laughs> it might work as a steak. I brought a silver chain. For a few seconds no one says anything. What time is it? You look at the clock. Why is it seven in summer? Is it different in America? Because in Germany during summer it gets dark later than seven, definitely. But maybe there's somewhere uh, more south. That's it. It's almost seven. Or north, north, north. Yeah. Brendan show up all day, did he? You don't think that Duck suddenly goes quiet? Do you feel that? Ooh! You feel it too. A vibration. Some kind of electricity. And a burning smell. Whoa! What the? Huh, <laughs> Jimmy. It's kind of cool. Come here, come on. No, don't go in there. Jimmy still surprises you. A few minutes ago he seemed... What word did you use? Childish. Now you don't quite know what to think. Don't go! 
What do you think? Shall we go in? No. Let's wait a bit. You shake your head. Jimmy's about to say something, but suddenly shuts up. Well, I've been waiting for you. He just started to smile. I think the first image he didn't, but maybe I'm making this up. Come with me. You look at Doug. Doug looks at Jimmy, and Jimmy looks at you. Jimmy strides forward and forces you to take a few quick steps as to, so as not to be left behind. You know, this looks like a little bit like the art from Hellboy. Mike something something. Sorry, I don't know the name. I'm... Look, I est we established that I'm bad with names. But this kind of reminds me of that. And this is probably him through the times, you know? It's like for different portraits with like different beards. <laughs> it's hilarious. Wow. Yes. Wow. You feel small in there. You've never seen a house with such high ceilings. There was a time when everything was different. You'd have been greeted by my servants. Entertained until I decided to join you. What would you like to drink? Water. I have water. Holy water. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> An awkward silence follows Jimmy's joke. <laughs> a soda then. <laughs> no, she's embarrassed. He's like, come on, man. Don't do this. Doug's eyes wide. Me too. Your cousin can't stay away from sugary drinks. Let's make it three sodas. To keep things simple. Try to make up for Jimmy's attitude with a smile. Uh, maybe there's some in the pantry. I'll be back in a minute. As soon as the door to the huge dining room closes, the three of you jump out of your chairs. How old is this furniture? Who are all these people? Do you see the little bats on the chairs? None of you can contain your amazement. After all, you were in a vampire's house. Yeah, get out of there, kids. Get the fuck out of there. It's not a place to be for anyone except vampires. Holy water. Doug lets out a hiss and you can't help but love. Laugh, laugh, laugh. I'm sure he's been thinking of vampire jokes all afternoon. Jimmy doesn't say anything and your laughter doesn't last long. Silence is oppressive. You wonder if the walls of the dining room had ever heard the sound of people laughing. Did the vampire kill Brandon, by the way, because they didn't see him in school? You unconsciously fondle with your bracelet. And you're thankful it's silver. The door opens and none of you say anything. You're lucky. I found carbonated beverages in one of the pantries. Doug and Jimmy uncork their bottles. And they don't like what they hear. A faint hissing sound, like a balloon quietly deflating. Did you see the bottling date? You try to speak softly so the vampire won't hear you. One of my maids always said, Soda never expires. Did he hear you? How? What's well, a vampire? Do vampires have superhuman hearing? Look, okay. So I get it, you know, you're like a child in 1954 and maybe you haven't heard much of vampires. But then when you meet one and then he's like, well, wait in the dark to meet me, which is that's sketchy, you know. At least go to the library and get a book about vampires and read up a little bit on it so you kind of know what's what. I know you have a lot of questions. Brandon, for example. You won't have to worry about him anymore. That's not good, vampire. Also, what's your name? Just, just probably not Mr. Vampire, right? Did you kill him? Oh, he's drinking Brent's blood. What do you think I am? Let's just say he's not going to be able to hurt you anymore. Or to hurt anyone anymore. But... Uh, Ooh, listen carefully. You saved me, and now I owe you. What about the drive-in theater? The question takes you by surprise. Is the vampire also able to read your minds? Or is there a simple explanation? We like horror movies! <laughs> oh, Doug. <laughs> what is Doug doing? Why is he even telling him stuff? Give me a minute. I have something to show you. Something to show us? How many of the dozens of horror movies you've seen include a line just like that one? 
You wait for the door to close. I mean, now she gets a little bit suspicious. She's in this fucking house. She should have gotten... The moment they saw him kill the deer, she should have been like, okay, whatever the suit says, just not... Let's not do it. And you don't have to say anything. You try to hold back your laughter. And breathe through your nose. What did you do? Why Why did we run? Duck tries to catch his breath. What do you mean, why? That old guy's a freak. And we don't want to die in his haunted house. You look at Jimmy and smile. Jimmy smiles back. It's just a second. I mean, I, I don't know if I would do that. Because that's now... I mean, he probably knows where they live. And now he's insulted because he's an old guy and they're like very much on, you know, politeness rules. Very etiquette, you know, driven. Especially vampires, I think. You know, with the whole like inviting you to your house. So just, they shouldn't have gone into his house in the first place. And I think that would have been the best solution. But now that's, I don't know, just a second. And when you realize, you look down and pull your arm away. All right, we're back with Lou. Um, save, yes. Uh, and now I want to quit to menu, main menu. I have it saved. Okay. Oh man, I'm loving this. I love it. It is so cool. It's fun. I mean, I knew it. I knew that I would enjoy this to pieces. Also, shit. This is Doug's missing poster, so that will happen. My theory is though that uh, we will actually see... What's with the gallery? Oh, there you go. Solve one matchstick puzzle. Well, yeah. Oh, I guess I already... Oh, because I didn't go to the places. Yeah, I'm sorry. I skipped... I guess I skipped like a whole bunch of mini games. Um... But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, Mothman 1966 was uh, the same. Like, I love the change of perspective, um, the storytelling. And the cool thing about these stories is that they're, you know, they, they're basically they're referencing old school stories. I think if you know Salem's Lot and um, Lost, even Lost Boys kind of, you know, this, I mean, kids, you know, it is kind of cool to have a weird stranger uh, who's like cool and weird, and mysterious, you know, and then also to laugh at him. <laughs> Um, but usually these stories also go really just, you know, in a different direction that you don't expect them to be. Um, so I'm, I'm having loads of fun with this and I can't wait for the next episode. Also, you know, I will put in the, in the video description a recommendation that I think already gave a thousand times. And the funny thing is I never can remember the movie title. So it's, um... It's an old Australian movie, I think. New Zealand or Australian. Because Viggo Mortensen plays in it. He was very young back then. Um, and it's basically a, kind of a vampire story. It's really hard, though. Like, it's, it's hard to swallow. So it's not like a fun... Like, Lost Boys, that's fun, you know. Even Salem's Lot is, like, fun. Um, like, all, all iterations, kind of, I think. I haven't seen the newest one. The one that's more, like, old-timey. But the other ones, you know. Um, but this one is is very uh, psychological a little bit, very dark, you know, very sad and depressing. But it is one of the coolest, I don't know, it's one of those movies where it's really creeping up on you, you know. It gets under your skin and it's really, and I had to think of, before I started playing this, just, you know, I knew about that there was a vampire and the kids. That's what I had to think about because this is also basically about vampires and kids. So I will put the link to the trailer um, in my video description in case you want to watch it, you know. And um, yeah, also, if you, like, how do you like it so far? Would you, would you have gone to the road at 7 p.m.? I mean, 7 p.m. is still, I think, that's the thing, you know. It's still a time where you as a kid would probably say, well, it's not too late. Um, but at the same time, it's already dark and it's a fucking vampire, you know. Would you have gone into the house? I don't think I would have. If the house appears in front of me out of thin air, I think it wouldn't even be the thing that I would be, oh man, maybe I get killed in the house. It would be more like, well, what if I'm in the house and it, it disappears into thin air again? Like, where does it disappear to? Am I then lost to my to my parents, to my world? I don't want that. 
So that's why I wouldn't have entered the house. You know, you can you can also tell me about it. And um, also, if you saw something, if I, I mean, I obviously miss a lot of stuff because I did think that we could go to these places and play mini games, but. It is what it is, you know. This will be a one-time playthrough. I will not play it for different endings. Um, but yeah, if, if I miss something else, a reference or something, or this reminds you of something or you had a thought, you know, then share it in the comments. You're always welcome. And also, if you're new to this channel, you know, I play a lot of indie horror games. I mean, currently I'm playing this one, obviously. <laughs> That's just... Why did I say that? You know, you know that. Um, and I also started playing Bramble the Mountain King, which is about folklore and, and trolls. Super scary. Just shitless for me, you know, just tense. And, and you know, if you like, if you want to see me get whiny, that's, that's the game to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this, you know, subscribe. And I promise you, if I'm a vampire in a, in a barn, you know, and you save me, I will not kill a deer in front of you. Like, even if I had to kill a deer, I'll be like, kids, you might want to sit this one out, you know. Maybe maybe you go home now. Thank you very much. We can meet up later, but I, I gotta do some business now, you know. And you should, you should not watch. Just so you don't get traumatized, you know. Also, I don't think as an adult vampire, I would invite a bunch of strange kids to my house. But that's just me, you know, so subscribe! <laughs> Anyways, I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye! This is my self-recorded outro song so I don't get hit with copyright claims. If you subscribe, you subscribe to a lot of fun tutorials, reviews and let's plays!